Hello everyone and welcome to episode 20 of the Merry-Go-Round podcast. My name is Mary Brasha and I'm your host. This podcast is powered by Selkirk Sport. We are Pickleball. Before we hop into this episode, I want to talk to you guys about Selkirk's amazing line of pickleball nets. Whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, Selkirk has the perfect net for you. When you choose a Selkirk net, you're not just choosing any net, you're opting for the official net of the PPA Tour, where excellence meets professional play. With Selkirk's line of nets, you can play pickleball anywhere. Selkirk's range of nets cater to every player's needs, offering budget-friendly choices for casual enthusiasts and premium options for those with a competitive edge, ensuring quality play for all levels. So if you love pickleball as much as I do, check out Selkirk's Pickleball Nets. Get the freedom to play anywhere and elevate your game with the net trusted by the pros. Selkirk's got you covered. If you're interested in getting a net of your own, go to selkirk.com slash collection slash nets. You can also find this link in the description of the show. Today's guest is currently ranked number four in the world for men's singles. He joined the tour at the end of 2022 and has quickly risen through the ranks. And I'm really glad to say that he's one of my good friends and we get to train here together in OC when we're not on the road. Welcome to the show, Connor Garnett. Hello, Connor, and welcome to the show. Excited to be here. I'm on the merry-go-round podcast, you know, just pump. Let's do it. Let's go. And Connor, you had a very exciting weekend this past weekend because it was your birthday. Happy belated birthday. How did you celebrate? Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I was in SF, uh, San Francisco, or more specifically San Jose, where I went to college, Santa Clara. So I went up there for a Sharks game and got to see a few of my college buddies, the Broncos are actually kicking butt this year, so uh, I got to okay. see, see them. They uh, won 4-0 against USF. I didn't watch the match, but I was morally supporting from the Sharks game, and uh, it was it was cool to be up there for that. And then the Hogue Classic is going on here for golf in Newport, so I was there, oh. yes, or, yeah, there yesterday. And the most important part of my day was I played – some video games at night with a few of my buddies, this game called League of Legends. So I can't go birthday weekend without uh, getting some video games in there as well. That sounds like a dream birthday weekend. So much going on in your life. I want to tap in a little bit more to your golf game though, Connor. How is that? That was, it was, it was a little too much fun. It was uh, the first ever event I've been to uh, for golf. I've watched, I play, uh, I play tennis golf, so my strokes look terrible, oh. but I can get out on the course. <laughs> and uh, my strokes don't look like your strokes, but I think I could still keep it like fun for you if we played. But uh, okay. it was cool to just get out there and uh, watch the event and uh, yeah, just be in that environment. It's very different than most other sports for me. Yeah, we definitely need to get on the golf course. I'm ready for this competition when we have a free moment. But as many people know, us pickleball pros, we are always on the go. It's like nonstop travel. And I feel like, you know, since we're friends, I know you specifically travel a lot more than a lot of other pros do. You are even more so on the go. So tell us a little bit more about how you manage that travel. Yeah, I think one of the cool things for me and why I like pickleball is just you get to go to all these places, and I'm also not really attached. I don't have a family. I don't, like, I have my parents who are in Seattle, but I'm not, like, married yeah. like some of these other pros or have kids yet, so I'm able to go travel, and honestly, I have two suitcases, and I just kind of take them wherever I go and try and find some laundry when I can. But uh, it's a it's a learning experience, you know. There was a uh, Minnesota. I don't know if you watched uh, the finals, but my shirt was fully wrinkled, and so uh, oh. I think there were some comments in the chat where it's like this guy needs to get an iron or something. So learning as I go, <laughs> but uh, just try and maximize the most of the experience and travel to all these cool places. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like. 
we'll be trying to set up practice and you know some pros are in town but it's like oh Mary sorry I'm in wherever you are I mean you're all over the country and I think that's so fun that you're in this time in your life where you get to just go around and have cool experiences so have you been doing much international travel or is it more in the U.S.? Not yet on the international side. That's the goal. I mean, who knows? Maybe we could go to Italy and do a clinic there. I know you have some Italian heritage, so that could be crazy, but I haven't yet. <laughs> yes, for I, that. I would love to. Uh, like Dubai, Italy, like Australia is getting into it. I mean, it seems like such a cool kind of atmosphere. Have you Have you kind of broken out of the U.S. yet or gone to Canada or Mexico or anything like that? I haven't done much international travel in general, like even non-pickleball. I have been to Canada and I've been to Mexico, but oh my gosh, it is a dream to go play pickleball in more countries and grow the sport. And I don't know if he texted you yet, but we have a mutual friend, Mike, who may have an opportunity for us to go to Japan. I don't know if he texted you, but he texted me about it. And I'm like, if we get to go to Japan to play pickleball, Tokyo is at the top of my bucket list. So I hope we get to go. <laughs> Heck yeah. I mean, maybe a little mixed doubles entry into this Japanese tournament. Yeah, let's go. Let's team up. So Connor, we want to jump back in time a little bit to how you got started on your pickleball journey. But before we do that, let's go even more back and talk about your background, where you grew up, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I grew up in Seattle, uh, born and raised there, went to Interlake High School, go Saints, and then did my undergrad at Santa Clara, played tennis there. I did a one-year master's in England, basically just a year to kind of screw around, have some fun, play some tennis over there while still progressing my education. And I got a job in investment banking in Seattle. I was supposed to start there and basically COVID hit. And what happened was our office in Seattle, the head guy there left. And so if I wanted to keep my job, I had to move down to our headquarters in OC. So they had to twist my arm to uh, get oh, out and have some fun in the sunshine, but <laughs> kind of crazy how like there's that. And then I met uh, Krista at the U S open and she hit me up to play some pickleball when I was a hitting partner there. And then one of my coworkers, uh, she also got me into pickleball a little bit, Claire. And so there were just so many things that had to go right for me to get into pickleball that it's just like yeah. baffles my mind. Like it, I didn't know what pickleball, I played it once at like my aunt's beach house, but I didn't really know it was a sport. And then all these things kind of just combined to uh, work out and just stoked and thankful. And when I am having those really bad days, I try and think back to that. I don't always do it, but sometimes that'll help. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's just crazy how life works and where your path can lead you. But also, I know you grew up kind of knowing Tyson McGuffin too. Like, did you play in some tennis tournaments that cross paths with him or tell us a little bit more about yeah. that? Yeah, so Tyson was uh, working, I think, he, I believe he was the head pro, sorry Tyson if I got that wrong, uh, at the Yakima <laughs> Tennis Club, which was one of the places that I played tennis. He played the junior tennis circuit in the Pacific Northwest as well. And so he would see me at these tournaments playing my like 12 year old four foot nothing self. And he, uh, I think it was Newport 2022 that I'm just playing there with like Ryan Hurley, Garrett, and I forget who yes, I Yes, love them. <laughs> but uh, like Tyson's there and I'm a pickleball newbie and I, I don't know any better. And uh, he walks over, like we get quiet. And I'm like, who is this guy? And uh, he's like, Connor, <laughs> like, are you Connor? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, do you know who I am? And I had obviously heard the name Tyson, but I hadn't put two and two together that he was Tyson from Yakima and all this stuff. So I'm just like there with like this silly blank look on my face. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, this is like, at the time he was like world number two or whatever he was. And I'm like, all right, yeah. now that you said your name, I 100% know you, that's my bad. But just kind of crazy how those worlds crossed, like crossed. And I mean, Irina was a coach at my club at one point. Uh, Vivian Glosman was 
part of that PNW crew as well. So there's a lot of that PNW Washington pride yeah. in pickleball. Yes, the Pacific Northwest is so beautiful. What a cool place to grow up, but definitely happy that, you know, your career led you down to the OC. And now that you're an OC resident, Connor, what are some of your hobbies that you like to do, you know, when you're not playing pickleball or things you like to do in the OC? Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great question. You know, I feel like, honestly, there's like a lot of the the time I'm like downtime is just like, whether it's after like we play at Lowe's Cab, it's just like grabbing some food uh, around yeah. there. Korean barbecue, I absolutely love. Anyone who knows me is like, he if he's going to dinner with me, it's probably he's going to take me to Korean barbecue. So that's a big Connor, you know that You know, that's the first time I ever tried Korean barbecue is when we celebrated you like getting a medal at a tournament or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. And you yeah. know, hopefully you're a Korean barbecue fan now. And uh, I know that, uh, what is it, Wang Cho over by uh, Costa Mesa. That's that's the spot for any listeners that are like, hey, where to go? Wang Cho. Good to know. Good to know. It was really good. And our karaoke. Our karaoke. Yeah, can't forget that. That was, I think that was one of the first times, like, we kind of hung out, like, and got to know each other. Uh outside yeah. of pickleball that karaoke that was for your birthday i believe yes and, yes and we had a fun private room that was that was a good time i'm a terrible singer but it was awesome to hear you guys and uh try not bring down the tune too much well connor i feel like since we already have talked about karaoke i just have to ask on the spot you know this is the go-to question on this show but what is your go-to song Great question. Katy Perry, Firework. Nothing pumps me up more for a match. Uh, I don't listen wow. to it all the time, but uh, if I need that one that I'm in my feels a little bit, throwing that on uh, can do the trick. That song is very motivational, and I love Katy Perry, so good choice, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so something about it, you know, just be the firework in the song. <laughs> You're going to have to make an appearance if she has her Firework Foundation tournament again this year because that was a super cool event we went to and I feel like you would be fanboying at it. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see some of those events. Like, how have you kind of seen too? It's like pickleball, like that's one of the like the things that blows my mind. It's like meeting these people. Is there someone like that event looked cool that you did? Is there something like that where you're just like holy cow this is like how pickleball is like crossed over and brought people and i feel like oh. that's like wild oh it's so wild some of the people that i've gotten to meet because of pickleball i mean these are people like i watch on tv and i'm like what you play pickleball and you like it <laughs> like it's just such a cool thing and the sport is just growing every single day so love to see it <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, it almost feels like not real. It's like, for me, like the first person I met was Golden Tate and I grew up a yeah. Seahawk. And so it's like all these sports are like a Katy Perry or a Jeremy Lin or LeBron, like all these people. It's like you grow up and you know who they are and we're still playing something that's getting to that sport level. But it's like we're there and we're in conversations with these people and you're just like, holy cow. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And I feel like, yeah, you play with – a lot of cool people and it's always fun to see that content on Instagram. I know you're you're a great influencer, Connor, working on the content game all the time. <laughs> you know, trying trying to influence, trying to uh play pickleball and uh you know, meet people and it's uh it's a great connector of people, pickleball. I think it's even better than because you, you play it you is play and as well and like, have you found that pickleball is more so than tennis? Oh, pickleball is way more social than tennis and just meeting people and having cool experiences. And I was even going to say, like, something we did that was super fun is we got to go to the Tennis Channel studio in Santa Monica because we live so close. And it's cool to see the behind the scenes of, like, all that goes into the production and, like, you know, promoting pickleball and how it's just growing. And, yeah, definitely – get connected with a lot more people through this sport than I did in tennis. So yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's it's sick. I mean, that tennis channel, it's like growing up, like watching tennis channel and then we got to go out there. It's like, holy, holy cow. Right. I know. I know. Well, I hope that eventually I get to go to like some of the other Grand Slams. I've been to the U.S. Open. I know you were a hitting partner there. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that experience, but hopefully I can get to Australia and Wimbledon and the French eventually. <laughs> What, would you do like a clinic? Like, what's the order? Is it like an Australian Open plus a clinic there? Or how, how are we, how are we getting you to these events? Well, I saw that the PPA announced that they're kind of merging with Australia pickleball more. So hopefully, I can go and play some pickleball, maybe teach some pickleball, but then yeah, tour around and see the sights is the most important, and try the food. <laughs> Yeah, that food. The animals yeah. there are a little scary. I'm not a big spider guy, so uh, I would love to go to Australia, but I uh, would be very sparing with uh, just being aware of everything out in the uh, like out in nature out there. What about koalas? Do you like koalas? Love big koalas. Okay. Okay. Good to know. That's the Connor <laughs> mascot. Like it could be. I feel like. Are you a koala person? I think they're so cute. They're so cute. So yeah, I would love to see one in person. I don't think I have before actually. So I'm excited, but I could go on and on about traveling and whatnot and all the cool things that we hope to see in the world. But Connor, we want to learn a little bit more about how you have risen through the ranks. You are number four in the world right now in men's singles and I just want to hear a little bit more about why you like pickleball singles. Yeah, I think singles is a little bit more one-to-one -one from tennis. And so when I got into pickleball, singles was easier. I played more doubles, but I felt like I could win more in singles. And I think everyone's a little bit naturally siding with what they can do better at, at least to start. And then you do what you don't want to do. And so that's what got me into singles pickleball. And... I just love it because it's a great workout. It's very mentally demanding. You're it's one on one. Yeah. So it's really can you master your mind and be able to come out on top? And it's a constant struggle. There are some matches where you can do it perfectly and there are some that you can't. And so that's what I love about it. I mean, you've been in two of the four uh finals this year so far in singles i believe so similar where you, it's just finding that mental side and so i can imagine yeah. you you're very similar with that where it's like how do you stay locked in and it's just that fun battle of that at least for me oh i completely agree singles pickleball first of all like you said great workout guys if you want to get in shape please play pickleball singles because it will do the job for you but Second, the mental challenge of it and, you know, being on the court with yourself and finding the strength to win 11 points in a game, you know, it takes a lot of focus and it is a learning process. So I enjoy it, even though there are ups and downs. And sometimes when there's the downs, you get home from a tournament, you're like, oh, singles is so hard. Like, it's so exhausting. But then it's those really good moments like you also had an appearance in the Minnesota final and in doubles too. So bravo, good job. But, you know, making it to those championship Sunday moments, that's what we play for. At least I think so. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. It's it's those ups and downs and remembering the wins and, you know, uh, surviving yeah. the losses is how I like to say it. <laughs> exactly. Surviving the losses and Connor, I want to hear about, I don't know if you would have won or lost a battle, but like your epic singles battle that comes to mind, one that you've played, what's one you can share with the people that really resonates with you? Yeah, I think the one that I that I uh, remember the most is I played Gabe uh, Joseph, and we've mm -hmm. done battle many times. He's come out on top. I've come out on top and uh, yeah. just an all-around all great player. But we played in Las Vegas, and I was I had food poisoning going into that tournament, 
And so I hadn't really eaten and I was battling. Oh. I had a battle with Alex Newman before it and I play him. I'm down a set in nine two. And I was just able to tap into this flow state that just like I was playing well. And I think yeah. I got a, a few lucky breaks, but was able to come back, get that match. And I just remember sitting down after the match on the court, like Liv was telling me to get up for the interview. And I was like, can I just sit here for like an hour and just recover? Cause it was just so mentally, physically and emotionally just draining of a match. Uh, but those are like the moments where it's like when you can control yourself, there's no greater feeling at least yeah. to me. Yeah. When you describe that flow state, I know exactly what you're referring to when you're just locked in, in the zone, as you say, dialed in, right? I remember I stole exactly. that <laughs> phrase from you for an Instagram post once. But when you can find that state on the singles court, it is just the best feeling because you feel like you can make all your passing shots and just win all these points. And singles is super streaky. So you can run off like nine points in a row in a singles match. And it's always something to keep in mind on the court, not to panic, you know, not to be like, oh, someone's creeping back or, you know, you can do it too. So just that up and down battle of a singles match is super fun. So thanks for sharing, Connor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it, the single score is gnarly, not for the weak of heart. It is not for the weak of heart. And Connor, I did want to ask also, how do you recover after a long singles day? I know we have progressive draw now in some tournaments too, but how do you recover for a doubles day right after? Yeah, that's a that's a great question and uh, I try my best. I'm not always perfect, but when I can, like, I'll make sure to stretch out. I'll try and do like 30 minutes to an hour of stretching after my match. And then okay. the thing I've only done once, but there's probably been three or four times I should have done it. And I felt great after is an ice bath. I think the ice bath after singles day is very solid. Now, granted, you finish up at like seven and you got to go get the ice, like, get ice from like Safeway or a grocery store and then fill yeah. your bathtub and then put the water in and you're trying to eat food and all this stuff. So it is something you have to mentally focus and do, but should For be sure. easy. And so I will be doing it going forward. I like to throw things out to hold myself accountable, but I think that's a great thing to do along with the stretching as well. Okay. This is a good tip because I don't, do ice baths. So I feel like you're inspiring me to maybe take the plunge. I know, I know. Good pun by me, but I'm, I'm for it. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see some Mary in an ice bath content. I will come out there and film yeah. it. Let me know when we Thank will get you to the ice bath and uh, get you out yeah. there. And maybe it's one, it's one before and then one during singles day. And if you like it, then you're hooked. But if not, I'll, I'll leave you be, but I think it could help. <laughs> yeah, I am definitely going to try more ice baths. I hear they're great. I personally use compression boots because I feel like singles is super hard on the lower body. And so that is always my go-to. Um, I can take them on the road, which is great. Have you ever used the compression boots, Connor? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I, I, okay. I like them. That's a great, great shout out. And it's nice too, that the PPA will usually have them at a lot of the events. So I yeah. make sure I get enough treatment, uh, before and after my matches, get the massage gun in there and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, do you feel like you're getting less sore as like the year goes on, like you're starting to get used to singles or is it kind of the same soreness anytime you have a deep run? I feel like it's kind of the same and it's always such a struggle to come back from mixed day after a long singles day because I've had multiple singles days that have ended at 8 p.m. So the recovery time in between is very short and finding the right way to prepare for the next day. I'm still learning. And again, that's the thing about this sport. It's just a learning process in general as it's growing. But yeah, I find myself to be super sore after singles, but it is what it is because I like it. So <laughs> yeah. I like playing singles, so I'm, I'm not going to stop. But 
Yeah, really working on mobility. I recently went back to Fast Twitch at Lowe's Cab, if you've seen it. And yeah. my trainer gave me a full-on mobility routine that I hadn't really had in the past. Oh and I even woke up today and did it, Connor, starting the week oh, yeah. strong. So, <laughs> Love to hear. yes, building the strength. But Anyway, Connor, I wanted to talk a little bit more about, you know, you talked about your investment banking background. What a cool job and really awesome thing to be in. But you made that jump to full-time pickleball at the beginning of last year. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So describe to the viewers what it was like to make that decision. Yeah, I would say when I was doing investment banking, I had a few like buddies that I would call like regularly and just kind of like talk about stuff. And so those calls started to shift to like, hey, what do you guys think about me going into pickleball? And it started to like, I started to get my feet wet. I would, I was at first yeah. telling my work about pickleball just because it was so new and I didn't think I could like actually go into it. And then I started to get better at it. I'm like, oh, like maybe I can actually like you have a career out of this so then the conversation yeah. switched to guess what i did this weekend to uh hey just like as a heads up like i'm starting to do a little bit more of this like it could turn into something more serious but i just yeah. want to like be up front and so it shifted and then finally i uh, when i was able to sign with the ppa in the beginning of last year and then get drafted to a challenger mlp team that was kind of when I was like, all right, putting my investment banker hat on, I have enough like funds to support my lifestyle starting out and then I can get everything else to follow. And so I had that yeah. and I had a conversation with the team at my investment bank and they were understanding, super supportive because I wasn't going to a competitor. It was something that was different. And so I've kept in really good contact with them. But I think my mom at first was like, what is this sport like <laughs> you're quitting a great job we put you in college sent you yeah. to grad school like you're gonna go out and play pickleball and you're gonna make a living of it and uh it took a few more phone calls of convincing then she was on board and she understood that i had a plan but i think the shock yeah. value of hearing the word pickleball was uh was a little surprising but luckily it all worked out so far it clearly has. You have really risen through the ranks so fast. Like, I mean, you just keep getting better and better. And it's so fun to see. And it's fun that we get to train together when we do have the time at home to train. And what's your advice to someone who also may be trying to make that jump to the pro tour from a prior job? Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's difficult to get into pickleball and so you really have to be sure that you want to do it but i yeah. i think it's one of the most rewarding things like i was kind of yeah. grinding like after i was playing pickleball i was working in the evenings and so starting out it's like still keeping your job at least for me i like hedged it some people are just like fully confident they're like i know i'm good enough i'm gonna go in and so if you are yeah. one of those people more power to you i support you but for me, I was like, I, I don't know, let's let's dip my toe in a little bit. So I think it's right. just going out, playing the tournaments, and seeing seeing what can happen. I think the more you're out of these tournaments, you get to meet cool people. You can maybe get sponsored by someone. Like having a story is so is so great. I mean, it's yeah. People I think know that I came from that business world. People know you with your sister and like the Brosha yeah. name is like it's established and there's the brand behind it. And so it's like, oh, it's the the sisters, the Brasha sisters, the Calmo, like it's having this yeah. brand. And so the more you're kind of out there doing it and uh, creating that, I think it makes it easier to kind of get into the sport, get opportunities mm -hmm. and continue to play. And so it's really just trying to maximize that. That's kind of how I look at it, but pickleball is growing. It's not hopefully going anywhere. So get in, come compete. There's new people coming in every day and it's uh, fun to see where the sport's going. Great take, Connor. Wow. You need to write a book about <laughs> your experience. <laughs> that was really great. And 
I know that you also are kind of speaking of like building your brand and what you're known for. You are very known for your two handed backhand. Guys, I train with Connor now and then, and when you are speeding up your two handed backhand, there is something still so deceptive about it, even though I know you're doing it. <laughs> you still just hit such a great shot. So, what is your advice to people who are trying to learn a two handed backhand? Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of the shots that I, in pickleball that's really kind of growing in popularity this year. Yeah. And I've seen other pros, like I've seen Ben throughout the his play hit yeah. the two E a little bit at the kitchen line, Dylan in this last yeah. tournament. I've seen it a little bit. So I would say it's just about kind of hit it like I like to throw a medicine ball as like an example. Like it's getting that core oh, lower okay. body into it. Uh and then Using that second hand, making sure that second hand's on the paddle. I'll put my finger on the back of the paddle to give me a little bit more feel. Oh. And so there are certain things like that. Uh, there are some nuances at the kitchen line. I actually have a YouTube video on Connor Garnett Pickleball that goes through exactly the two-handed backhand, a shameless plug there, I know. Right. But uh, no, I think that, do it. that's been helpful uh, for some people to actually see the two-handed backhand and start working on it just because there's so many different cases and so it breaks down whether you're at the net, whether you're speeding up, but yeah. it's here to stay. And uh, hopefully we see some more two handed off the bounce speed ups from uh, Mary yourself as well uh, in the coming tournaments. <laughs> yes, I am definitely working on my two handed backhand speed up off the bounce. So watch out everyone because I'm just trying to be like Connor. <laughs> um, that is great to know. Thank you, Connor. We are almost concluding this interview and I know we're literally about to go play some singles later today. So go us. Um, but wanted to end with kind of what are some of your goals for the rest of the year? Yeah, I think goals for the rest of the year are, uh, one of my loftier goals and I just is to get a double crown. That's one of my goals this year is to get two golds at the same tournament. My starting goal is to get one PPA gold medal, but with uh, just, I feel like my game, I really want to push myself and see if I can get out there and do that. And then just yeah. to continue having fun. I think there have been some times in pickleball where I've taken it too seriously sometimes where yeah. I haven't been able to lock in and find that right balance. And so the mental side is something I really try and focus on because I'm a decently emotional person. And so yeah. you don't want to be emotional on the pickleball court. So calming down, handling that, having fun, enjoying it, I think is the other thing. So yeah, we'll see. Those are, mm -hmm. those are the two big ones for me. Good. I feel like shout out to you because I do feel like you are very good, even though maybe internally sometimes feel like, oh my gosh, like mentally I'm struggling. At least I have that. You yeah. always have such a positive outlook on the court. You can never really tell from the outside perspective if you're winning or losing. I really respect that about you. And I'm always trying to work on that too. I feel like I do a decent job. You, you, do, like, you do a good job. You're, you're short selling yourself there. You do a, you do a great job of that on the court. It, and it's fun too. It's, a lot of the SoCal it's people, like, it's fun to play singles and stuff with them because great attitude. Yeah. I'm excited to hopefully see your sister uh, join the singles ranks as well. Uh, that could be dangerous, too. That could be very dangerous, but we'll see. I mean, we just played last week, and she did beat me in our practice game. So we'll see if she makes an appearance on the tour soon. The people have voted that they want to see it. But you're so right, Connor. Like, being positive, having fun. I know that's how I play better, and I feel like you do too, right? Yeah. No, 100%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, maybe a Brasha Brasha singles final uh, on the PPA tour is in store when she starts playing. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, lots more championship Sunday appearances for both of us to come. I know that's a big goal. And I'm just so glad that you could come on the Merry Go Round podcast today. Thank you so much, Connor. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm ready to do some singles battle with you here in a little bit. And yeah, it's been it's been fun. 
It's been super fun. And thank you to everyone who tuned into this episode of the Merry Ground Podcast. We will see you next time. Bye.